Jesucristo habló con poder, con autoridad. Porque había gente aquí, ¿por qué tú hablas? Oh, oh, ¿Por qué tú estás haciendo su voz así? ¿Por qué tú hablas así? Porque Jesucristo habló así. Y estamos andando en el camino de Jesucristo. ¡Les! ¡La gloria! ¡La gloria es para nosotros en el reino del cielo! ¡Les! ¡El pacto! ¡El pacto que leemos en Deuteronomio 7! Ellos prefirieron morir, morir a que quebrar los mandamientos del Señor. Los Estados Unidos está bañado en la sangre de los indígenas. En verdad somos ricos, ¿por qué? Porque somos los verdaderos israelitas. Así es. Police officers have been killed by armed gangs since the beginning of the year. Haiti, the poorest nation in the Americas, has been controlled. Dans tout pays, dans toute la rue, pas de côté pour y dormir, mon yab souffri. Pas de l'eau, pas de manger, c'est mon yab marcher pied à terre, oh bon Dieu. Non, mais non, mais même si tu me dis que tu as joué, mais je me suis fait que tu as joué, 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 Shalom, brothers, shalom, sisters, Bishop Nathaniel here. You know what day it is. That's right. It is Shout Out Tuesday. It's Shout Out Tuesday. And you know how I love to read your letters of exhortation and your donations of support. But before I do that, I often love to cover a little bit of our hidden history. So get your libations, get your comfort food, get your diet food, get whatever you need to relax yourself for today's episode all right so let's take a look and i'll be right back a tribute for the negro being a vindication of the moral intellectual and religious capabilities of the colored portion of mankind all right this was published in 1848 i'm going over to page all right i'm going to start here where it says the jews the Jews, however, slightly 
their features may have assimilated to those of other nations amongst whom they are scattered from the causes already stated, certainly form a very striking example as regards the uncertainty of perpetuity in color, excuse me, descended from one stock and prohibited by the most sacred institutions, talking about God's laws, from intermarrying with the people of other nations and yet dispersed according to the divine prediction. That's Deuteronomy 28 verse 64, the divine prediction about them being scattered into every country on the globe. This one people is marked with the colors of all, fair in Britain and Germany, brown in France and in Turkey, swarthy, that means black, in Portugal and in Spain, olive, that means brown or black, olives come in three colors, green, brown, or black, olive in Syria and in Chaldea, tawny, that also means black, tawny or copper colored in Arabia, and in Egypt, whilst they are black at Congo in Africa. Wow, talking about the Jews. Let's move over. All right, let's read this. A remarkable fact in the history of Loango and the empire of Congo is that the country, according to a statement which was fully credited by Oldendorp, himself a writer of most correct judgment and of unimpeachable Peachable veracity contains many Jews settled in it. Who retain their religious rights and the distinct habits which keep them isolated from other nations. Though thus separate from the African population, they are black, talking about the Jews, and resemble the other Negroes in every respect as to physical character. It is probably in allusion to this case that Pennington in his textbook says, the descendants of a colony of Jews originally from Judea settled on the coast of Africa are black. See that? Talking about the Jews, a colony of Jews originally from Judea settled on the coast of Africa are black. This was written in 1848. Wow. Mm. A Social and Religious History of the Jews by Salo Whitmayer Barron. All right, this was printed in 1973. The Jewish Publication Society of America. Well, all righty then. Let's go inside this book. I'm going over to page 265. All right, read along with me. During the last quarter of the 16th century, there were several other accusations against individuals who allegedly performed such suspicious acts as removing the sinews from certain parts of, of animals before eating them, cooking their food with oil rather than lard, and betraying other symptoms of Jewish infidelity, meaning Jewish unbelief. Less routine was the case of a sentent centenarian, that means 100-year-old Negro, 100-year-old Negro, Pedro Alvarez. So there was this black man named Pedro Alvarez who was reported to have insisted that God had commanded all men to be circumcised. This Negro, Pedro Alvarez, was a Jew. Okay? He was a Jew. And this was in Spain, that's Iberia, all right? Let's go on, because as you read further down, it goes into the, Inqu the Spanish Inquisition against the Jews. It's funny how they threw in this 100-year-old Negro, and it says there was no trial because Alvarez died in prison. This was regarding the Spanish Inquisition, the Spanish Inquisition, all right? Let's move on. I'm going to page 354. A new impetus to seek shelter in the unexplored dark continent, the dark continent is Africa, was given to Jewish refugees from the Iberian uh, 
persecutions from the Spanish persecutions after 1391 in the area around Tendirma, some 60 miles southwest of Timbuktu. That's in Africa. Founded in 1496, Jews had allegedly lived for generations under seven kings, each of whom had an army of 12,000 knights. Wow. Y'all see that? So you had Jews living in Africa, found in this area, founded in 1496. Remember, the persecution started here in 1391. They founded this place, Tendirma, in 1496, and they lived for generations under seven kings, each of whom had an army of 12,000 knights. So the black Jews were the knights. Let's, 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 let's not just stop there, though. Let's go down. It has been suggested by no, by no less an authority from Friedrich Retzel that the island of Sao Tome, that's St. Thomas, that's on the west coast of Africa, discovered by the Portuguese in 1471 and subsequently used as a place of deportation for Jews unwilling to adopt baptism. You had many of the black Jews who refused to be baptized in a Roman Catholic church under Christianity, which was nothing but white supremacy. We recall the forcible removal of Portuguese Jewish children to that locality in 1497. So these Portuguese Jewish children were removed to the island of St. Thomas, okay? May have been instrumental in the settlement of many Jews in the neighboring West African lands. Do y'all see this? Do y'all see this? Do you understand? Let's read it again. It has been suggested by no less an authority from Friedrich Ratzel that the island of Sao Tome, St. Thomas, that's on the west coast of Africa, discovered by the Portuguese in 1471 and sub subsequently used as a place of deportation for Jews unwilling to adopt baptism, we recall the forcible removal of Portuguese children, Portuguese Jewish children to that locality in 1497 may have been instrumental in the settlement of many Jews in the neighboring West African lands. Wow. Wow. All right. Look at this. These tenuous lines of investigation have been pursued mainly by anthropologists who have looked for patterns of thought and behavior reminiscent of those known among Jews and found among various African tribes and their descendants transplanted. Let me zoom in. Let me just zoom in right a little better. Uh, known among Jews and found among various African tribes and their descendants transplanted to the New World. The New World is the United States of America and the Caribbean Islands. Okay, that's the New World. So you had Jews from among various African tribes transplanted to the New World. Okay, representative of that school of thought is Joseph J. Williams, whose work on Hebrewisms in West Africa still is a major source of information, both substantive and speculative, beginning with the study of Ashanti descendants living in Jamaica. Williams writes, this is what he writes, in the first place, many Hebrewisms were discovered in the Ashanti tribal customs. Then several Ashanti words were found to have a striking resemblance to those of equivalent Hebrew meaning. Finally, the supreme being of the Ashanti gave gave strong indication of being the Yahweh of the Old Testament. I was taught the pronunciation is Yahweh, but we know it's talking about the same God of the Old Testament in the Bible, of the entire Bible, as a matter of fact. Look at this. Of course, since these, since these descendants of Ashanti tribesmen lived alongside of, sometimes of the very households of Jamaican Jews, the origin of such contacts in the Ashanti's original African habitat can no longer be ascertained. And they lost that history. General History of Africa. Editor B.A. Ogot. I'm on 
on page 67. I'm going down right here to this paragraph. Africans also settled along parts of the Malabar coast during the 17th and 18th centuries. These were black Jews. Let's read that again. Africans also settled along parts of the Malabar coast during the 17th and 18th centuries. These were black Jews, descendants of African slaves who had left Cochin and Karela in southern India to come and settle on that coast. Most became domestics and intermarried with local inhabitants and other Jews. What I want you to see is that the Africans who settled along Malabar were black Jews, descendants of African slaves. All right, brothers, all right, sisters, you saw it for yourself. Now, that was some good stuff right there, if I do say so myself. Our history always amazes me. I hope it amazes you. And you can teach your children, keep your, teach your brothers, your sisters, your mamas, your fathers. Teach them. Show them. Show them the videos. Make sure you share, share, share. Always share these videos, all right? So now, what we're going to do now is take a look at what's going on in modern day Israel. All right. Modern day Israel. We're going to take a look at the history of the Israelis as well as the Palestinians. And then we'll come back with my commentary. All right. Palestine, you may think violence, land seizures, and a decades-long Israeli occupation. But what you might not know is that another country played a driving role in causing the region's conflict, Imperial Britain. From 1516 to at least 1917, Palestine was under the control of the Ottoman Empire, a religiously diverse land where Christians, Muslims, and Jews lived alongside one another at peace for the most part. Then in the early 1900s, a small number of European Jews were trying to drum up support for Zionism and the establishment of a Jewish homeland. Just 20 years before, in 1897, the movement led by Theodor Herzl was initiated at a conference in Switzerland. They decided that they would advocate for a Jewish homeland in Palestine, but the movement at the time didn't have much support. And at the time, only around 8% of the population of Palestine was Jewish. At the same time, Arab nationalism was on the rise and many Palestinians wanted an independent state. Imperial Britain knew of both the ambitions of Zionists and Palestinians and used the situation to bolster their own interests. In 1914, amid World War I, Britain went to war with the Ottoman Empire. And in 1915, Henry McMahon, Britain's representative in Cairo, approached Arab leaders with a proposal. Britain would agree to Arab independence if they helped fight against the Ottomans. Then in 1917, Britain's foreign secretary wrote a one-paragraph letter to Walter Rothschild, a leading figure in the British Jewish community. It read, his Majesty's government views with favor the establishment in Palestine of a national home for the Jewish people and will use their best endeavors to facilitate the achievement of this object. The letter became known as the Balfour Declaration, and it was in stark contrast to a declaration of the British and French armies in 1918, which assured the people of Syria, Palestine and Mesopotamia of autonomy. So what was going on? Britain had promised independence to the Arabs that lived in Palestine, but then also promised a homeland for Jews on land that was already inhabited. Was Britain just transferring land that did not belong to them to whoever they liked? When the Ottoman Empire collapsed in 1918, the League of Nations gave Britain a mandate or administrative control of Palestine in 1920. It was a dual mandate. On one hand, they were to act on behalf of Palestinians. But on the other hand, they were to act on behalf of the international community of Jews who wanted to establish a homeland. 
Britain then drew up arbitrary borders, transferring the eastern bank of the Jordan River to the Hashemites. It was under the British mandate that Jews from Europe began to immigrate to Palestine and buy up land. The Jewish population in Palestine grew tenfold from 60,000 to more than 600,000 between 1918 and 1947. Many Palestinians saw the mass influx of Jews as a European colonial movement. So, as one might expect, it led to conflict. In 1929, riots broke out at the Wailing Wall in Jerusalem. Both Palestinians and Jews lost lives. In 1936, after Jewish immigration increased even more, more riots broke out. This time, the British were heavy-handed and killed between 2,000 and 5,000 Palestinians. A Royal British Commission concluded that because Britain had allowed mass immigration, Palestine had two distinct societies that couldn't be reconciled. They recommended a partition of the land. The Arab Higher Committee rejected this, saying it was all their land. Britain then banned the Arab Higher Commission. They introduced the White Paper of 1939. It stated that Palestine should be a binational state inhabited by Jews and Palestinians, but that Jewish immigration would be limited for five years. But illegal immigration still went on, and violence continued to erupt. And when Britain couldn't handle the mess they had a part in creating, they handed the country back to the UN in 1948. The UN then decided to partition Palestine. The story gets a lot more complicated after this. But the British promising land which already belonged to Palestinians to other people has played a part in decades of conflict and bloodshed. And if I go to sensitive history, well, then I must quote sources that say it rather than that I say it. This is a fascinating book, and the web pages are there, you can check it out. Facts are facts. This is a book that was written by a Jewish man. And he confronted the thinking of many of the high-placed individuals of the world. This is interesting stuff. In this book, Benjamin H. Friedman, a Jewish man, writes about the Jews and reveals an interesting history. He states that the present Jews in Palestine are not the true descendants of the Judeans, but rather descendants of the Khazars. In the letter addressed to D. David Goldstein of Boston, Massachusetts, a convert to Catholicism, the author, Benjamin Friedman of New York City, dated October 1954, provides some fascinating insights. This is in the public domain. Let's study this for a while and see where we get. Benjamin H. Freeman claims that the word Jew was only introduced into the English language in the 18th century and that Jesus referred to himself as a Judean and not as a Jew. Inscribed upon the cross when Jesus was crucified were the Latin words Iesus Nazarenus Rex Iodeorum, which means Jesus of Nazareth, ruler of the Judeans. Now this is fascinating. I went and checked it. And it is so. Yes, it happens to be so. Now the word Jew today has a religious as well as a political connotation. You think of a Jewish entity, a government, but you also think of their religion incorporated at the same time. Whereas the term Judean is a geographic connotation. It's a geographic. It doesn't incorporate the religion. It's where he came from. He was from Judah. He was a Judean. He further writes, the form of religious worship known as Phariseeism in Judea in the time of Jesus was a religious practice based exclusively upon the Talmud. The Talmud in the time of Jesus was the Magna Carta, the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, all rolled into one of those who practiced Phariseeism. The Talmud today occupies the same relative position with respect to those who profess Judaism. So the rituals and rites that many of them observed were based on the Talmud and not on the Torah. Rabbi Morris, this is all from the source, Rabbi Morris in Kurtzer wrote a most revealing and comprehensive article with the title, What is a Jew? which was published as a feature article in Look magazine 
in June 17, 1952 issue. In that article, Rabbi Morris Kotzer evaluated the significance of the Talmud to Judaism today. In that illuminating treatise and that important subject, by the most qualified authority at the time, Rabbi Morris N. Kurtzer stated, the Talmud consists of 63 books of legal, ethical, and historical writings of the ancient rabbis. It was edited five centuries after the birth of Jesus. It is a compendium of law and lore. It is the legal code which forms the basis of the Jewish religious law, and it is, note, the textbook used in the training of rabbis. So rabbis are trained according to the Talmud, and the Talmud has very little in common with the Bible. And then he states, from the birth of Jesus until this day, there have never been recorded more vicious and vile, libelous blasphemies of Jesus or Christians and the Christian faith by anyone, anywhere, or any time than you will find between the covers of the infamous 63 books, which are the legal code which forms the basis of the Jewish religious law as well as the textbook used in the training of rabbis. I don't want to go into it. If I were to put the quotes on the screen, which the Talmud contains about Jesus, you would be horrified. It is some of the vilest statements that I have ever had the dishonor of reading. And this is what their training consists of. He then proceeds to quote some of the most horrendous statements from the Talmud regarding ethical issues, and not only regarding ethical issues, which deal with many, many issues from economics to relations with women, etc., and, of course, the view on Christ. As to the origin of the present Jews in Palestine, he states that those Jews derived from Eastern Europe and many, many of the Jews that today live in the reconstituted state of Israel come from Eastern Europe are not descendants of the Judeans or the lost tribes of Israel, but rather descendants of the Khazars. Who are they? They were a nation most people do not even know of. He writes, The so-called self-styled Jews in Eastern Europe in modern history cannot legitimately point to a single ancient ancestor who ever set even a foot on the soil of Palestine in the era of Bible history. Research also revealed that the so-called or self-styled Jews in Eastern Europe were never Semites, are not Semites now, nor can they ever be regarded as Semites at any future time by any stretch of the imagination. What secret mysterious power has been able for countless generations to keep the origin and the history of the Khazars and the Khazar kingdom out of the history textbooks? Did you ever learn about it at school? I never learned about it. And out of classroom courses in history throughout the world, the origin and the history of Khazars and the Khazar kingdom are certainly incontestable historical facts. You have to do some cross-checking. Even the Jewish encyclopedia is quite explicit about it. This was the Khazar kingdom. Here is the Black Sea, the Byzantine Empire, here was Persia. And here was the kingdom of the Khazars. It was a massive kingdom. All right, so let's get to the commentary on what we just witnessed. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 60, and let's start at verse 1. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Who's the thee? The children of Israel. When it says arise and shine, it mean, arise means to wake up out of your sleep, out of your slumber. When it says to shine, arise and shine, that means to teach what you've arisen to, 
Okay, for thy light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Verse two, for behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. So darkness, which represents lies, sin has covered the earth and gross darkness, the people. What does it mean? Gross darkness, the people Well, the people first and foremost are the children of Israel. What does it mean? Gross darkness. It's like examine your check. You got your gross pay. Then you got your net pay. Your gross pay is the whole thing. Your net is what comes after taxes, after taxes. Well, the nations on the world, when you look at verse two again, for behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. They got the net. But then no, watch this and gross darkness. The people, we got the whole thing. We got the whole darkness, the whole insurmountable amount of lies. The whole amount of sin is on the 12 tribes of Israel. We lost our language, our culture, our heritage, our land, our nation, our heritage. We lost it all. We've lost our minds. We've lost everything. Let's read on. But the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light. The Gentiles is talking about is us. We're the Gentiles, okay? We're the ones called African-American, Puerto Rican, Dominican, West Indian, Haitian, Brazilian. We are the Gentiles. We're not called the 12 tribes of Israel no more. We the Gentiles. Watch this. Read that again. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of thy rising. We're the kings. We are the kings. Like it says in Revelation in chapter 1 verse 6. And hath made us kings and priests unto God and his father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So the kings we're reading about in Isaiah 60 is talking about the Israelites. Okay. So let's read that again. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 3. And the king shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of thy coming. Okay, so now let's go from there. Let's go to Revelation 12. And now, now I'm still dealing with the darkness covering the earth. The darkness, which is sin, which includes lie on top of lie on top of lie. Now watch this. Y'all hold on. Let me get it. Let me get it. Y'all bear with me. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now, your first thought about this is that this is just talking about the spiritual demon Satan. Oh, au contraire, mon frère. See, the spiritual demon Satan has physical children on the earth. I'm going to show you that right now. Watch this. Revelation 2 and verse 9. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. Christ is talking to the Israelites that were in Smyrna. This was one of the seven churches. Let's read it again. I know thy works. Why? Because we were laboring slaves in Smyrna. And tribulation, we was catching hell and poverty. We were impoverished as a nation, as a people. Watch this. But thou art rich, meaning all the promises in the Bible pertain to us. As it says in Romans 9 verse 4. Watch this. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. See that part right there? But are the synagogue of Satan. What is it calling the white man here that claims to be Jewish? the synagogue of Satan. Let's read on. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. Who's this devil that was casting some of the Israelites into prison? The same synagogue of Satan in verse nine. Who was that? The so-called white man that calls himself Jewish. Let's read it again. I'm gonna start at the bottom of verse nine. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not but are the synagogue of Satan. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. Who was, ask yourself, who was casting people into prison? It was not the spiritual demon coming down going, to prison with thee, I'm putting you in prison. No, it was the white man imprisoning our people. As it was back then, so it is today. Okay, 
the devil shall cast some of you into prison that you may be tried and you shall have tribulation 10 days. That goes into torture. Be thou faithful unto death and I will give thee a crown of life. You hear what Christ said? He told those uh, brothers and sisters that were in Shmerla, Smyrna to be faithful unto death and they shall receive the crown of life. Do y'all see that? I hope y'all see that. I hope you see it from there, from there, from there. So the reason I went there was to show you that the Satan and the devil is talking about man on earth as well. So when we go back now to Revelation 12, let's just go back there. And nine, and the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan which deceiveth the whole world. See, the spiritual demon isn't coming down deceiving people. He has his children on earth as vessels to deceive the nations of the world. And remember, we're in gross, the Israelites are in the worst amount of darkness. These, this media campaign that they have, their televisions, their internet, the, the radio, the, 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 newspaper, so forth and so on. Any form of communication is orchestrated and initiated by so-called white people, primarily those that say they are Jewish. Them, first and foremost. The Bible calls them the synagogue of Satan. The Bible calls them the devil. See, y'all think when we see, say such terms, we're being racist. No, we're saying it because Christ the King said it. See, your churches have never taught you that. I'm sure some of you have read it, You've asked your pastor, he's had no legitimate explanation. He'll take you to, for God so loved the world that he gave his only by God. Oh, shut the hell up. You don't know what you're talking about. Y'all better leave them churches. I'm telling y'all, leave them churches. So from there, let's go to the book of Joel. Since that's what the, the, the commentary that I'm giving is primarily about what happened in the land of Israel. After our people, why, why, watch this. You might ask, why aren't we in the land? What happened to the Israelites? Well, watch this. Luke 21 and verse 24. This is Christ prophesying to the Israelites. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. The they is the 12 tribes of Israel, the Israelites that were remaining in the land. Primarily, it was Judah, Benjamin, Levi. And you had remnants of the others scattered, like you had Anna of the tribe of uh, Asher. When you read in the book of Luke, you had uh, the Samaritan woman. The Samaritans were Israelites. You can read about that in John chapter 4. Okay. So, let's read it again. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. The Israelites shall fall by the edge of the sword and be led away captive into all. Let's read it. And shall be led away captive into all nations. That means slaves. We, we would be made slaves in all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. See, it says Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, meaning the other nations would take the land. Take the land, take the land, take the land. So who's in Jerusalem today according to Christ? Gentiles. But now let's get let's get the specific Gentile nations that's in the land. Let's be specific. Let's go to Joel chapter three. Let's start there. Verse one. For behold, in those days and in that time when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. What does it mean when he shall bring again the captivity of Judah and and Jerusalem. Well, to get the answer, let me look. Let's go to Joel chapter 3 and verse 3. For lo, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people, Israel and Judah, saith the Lord, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. So, verse, when we go back to Joel 3 and 1, that's a prophecy about God returning his real. 12 tribes, the real ones, eventually to the 12 tribes of Israel. But before he returns us to the land, there's a chain of events that must transpire first. Verse 2. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. 
Jehoshaphat means decision, valley of decision, and will plead with them, plead with the nations there for my people, uh oh, my people, and for my heritage, Israel. So he's telling you who his people and his heritage is. Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel. Watch this. Whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. Remember, Christ said we will be led away captive into all nations. That's what it means here when it says, whom they have scattered among the nations. Then watch what it says, and parted my land. Remember, Christ said the Gentiles, Jerusalem shall be trotted down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Did you forget already? I hope you're taking notes so you can go back and reflect. Okay. Now watch this. He's going to, he's going to break down them Gentiles for you. And he's going to explain who parted the land. Verse three. So now verse three, watch. He explains how the Israelites were scattered. And they have cast lots for my people. To cast lots means to bid. Was when we were bid upon in slavery, do I hear $100, $100, $5, oh, we got $500 in the back from the Louis, got gentleman from Louisiana. Uh, oh, I hear $1,000, $1,000 from the, from the gentleman from Virginia. Soul to the gentleman from Virginia. That's what it means. They have cast lots for my people. Okay. Let's read it again. Verse three. And they have cast lots for my people. And have given a boy for an harlot. What does that part mean? Have given a boy for an harlot. They made us into breeders, breeding farms. They had the men have sex with all the women to make more and more and more and more slaves. Do y'all see that? Let's read verse three again. And they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for an harlot and sold a girl for wine. I know some of y'all in school, y'all learned the history about slavery. I know they took it out of school now. It's like in Florida. They took uh, the teaching of uh, black studies out of schools where they talk about selling the young black girls for musket guns and wine. We all remember that. Mm -hmm. That they might drink, that they might party and rape the girls. That's what happened. Verse four. Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon? Tyre and Zidon are Hamites. Nilotic Hamites. These are not Shemites. These are Hamites, okay? What they call Nilotes, pure blood Nilotes. No mixtures in there. Okay, and all the coasts of Palestine. You see that pa Palestine? Who's that? The Palestinians, the Arabs from the Ottoman Empire. That's them. Will you render me a recompense? Meaning, will you pay me back when you bring judgment against me? God is asking. And if you recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? So God says, what you do to my people, I'm going to do to you. Okay, verse five, because you have taken my silver and my gold and have carried into your temples my goodly, pleasant things. So they robbed us. When Jerusalem was conquered and overthrown, they robbed us. You see the people of, of, of Rome carrying out the menorah, carrying out various uh, uh, wealth from the temple that was in Jerusalem. Y'all see those images? Y'all see those images? Mm -hmm. Verse six, the children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem, that's us, have you sold unto the Grecians. So the Hamites, Tyre and Zidon, 
and the Palestinians sold us to the Grecians, the white man. This is your transatlantic slave trade, that you might remove them far from their border. You see that? We were removed far from our border. They sold us into slavery. Now I'm reading the Bible. Your church is never going to read that to you. Your minister, he'll hem and hard. He'll try to twist scriptures to try to justify white, white folks. Listen, 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 listen. Ask your pastor this. After you read Joel 3, verse 3 to 6, show evidence that the Africans and the Arabs sold white people to white people. We would like to see that history. Where is it? Where were those slaves put on auction blocks, those white slaves that as he'll try to justify? Where were they put on slave ships? Hmm? We would like to see that history. We would like to see that history. From there, from there, from there. So now the terminology Grecians is generic for white people. Why? Because they say and teach us in school that civilization started with the Greeks. But let's get their biblical name. Let's go to Ezekiel 36 and verse 5. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumia. You see that word Idumia? That's Edom. Idumia is a Greco-Roman word for the Edomites. Idumia is Greco-Roman for Esau Edom. Who is that? The Caucasians, the Caucasians, the Caucasians. Let's read that part again. And against all Idumia, which have appointed my land into their possession. So it's letting you know that I, the Idumians, the Edomites, would possess the land into their possession. With the joy of all their heart, they took the land, not as Idumians, but they took the land as so-called Jewish people. The synagogue of Satan. That's who they took the land as. Jewish. Those that say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. That's what it's saying. Which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart. We have a homeland. They say we are going to have a new homeland with despiteful minds because they took it despite the fact that they knew it was not theirs. To cast it out for a prey. What does that part mean? To cast it out for a prey. They called to their fellow Idumians in Poland, Czechoslovakia, Russia, Germany, uh, uh, Uzbekistan, so forth and so on, and say, come get a piece of this land. Come, come get a piece of this land as Jewish people and learn this new form of Hebrew that we call Yiddish. That's what they do. And CNN, which they have uh, uh, set up, NBC, ABC, MSNBC, Fox News, all of them. They pushed the false narrative that those Caucasians are the Jews. And all your churches believe it. Hell, some of you listening right now believe it. All your churches believe it. Your schools believe it. The network pushes it day in, day out. Church, just think about, think about this. You ever notice every year there's a new movie about World War II and we have to feel sorry for Jewish people, the six million that died during the Nazi Holocaust. But what about the hundreds of millions of black people that died during slavery? Oh, to hell with that nigga. That's old time. Forget about that. That's what you hear. That's why they took critical race theory out of the school the 1619 project don't put that in because little white johnny will feel bad we don't want our children to feel bad no come on now now i'm going to give you some prophecy about what's going to happen in the land of israel regarding the idumians that took it as the jewish people and the palestinians war between ukraine and russia is not a big biblical issue when you read second esdras in the apocrypha chapter 15 and verse 14 woe to the world and them that dwell therein for the sword and their destruction draweth nigh and one people shall stand up to fight against another and swords in their hands many weapons in their hands that's what's going on between the ukraine and russia and it, that 
continues around the world. The main issue that leads to Armageddon or World War Three, as the media calls it. Let's go. Second Ezra chapter 15. I'm just going to get to the point. Verse 30. Second Ezra 15 verse 30. Also the Carmanians, the Carmanians are Iranians, raging in wrath shall go forth as the wild boars of the wood. And with great power shall they come and join battle with them and shall waste a portion of the land of the Assyrians. The land of the Assyrians is modern day Israel. If you remember the history, Assyria took over uh, a part of Israel. That's what it's referring to. Isaiah 14, verse 25, that I will break the Assyrian in my land, meaning the Lord's going to destroy modern day Israel. And upon my mountains, tread him underfoot. Then shall his yoke depart from off them and his burden depart from off their shoulders. So modern day Israel is going to be destroyed and the Lord is going to use uh, the Carmanians and the Arabs to do it. Let's jump down to verse 29. Rejoice not thou, whole Palestina. Palestina is modern day Palestine. Because the rod of him that smote thee is broken. Don't rejoice because the white man in Israel is destroyed. Watch this. For out of the serpent's root, meaning from America, shall come forth a cockatrice, meaning a, a serpent. And his fruit shall be a fiery flying serpent, meaning a missile. Right. Then when you jump down to verse 31, 31, howl, O gate, cry, O city, thou whole Palestina art dissolved, meaning Palestine is going to be destroyed. For there shall come for there shall come from the north a smoke, <laughs> meaning America, North America, and none shall be alone in his appointed times, meaning of destruction. All right, brothers, sisters, you saw that. You heard the scriptures. You heard the breakdown. That's what it is. Let's go to Zephaniah 2 and 3. Watch this. It reads, Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth. That's us, which have wrought his judgment, meaning wrought his commandments. Seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. Why does it say that? Because World War Three, or Armageddon is coming. The Valley of Jehoshaphat is being opened up. For nations to make their way in the Euphrates is drying up for nations to come in to make war against one another. Let's read on. Verse four, for Gaza shall be forsaken. You see that? And Ashkelon, a desolation. Let's read that again. Let's read that again. Verse four, for Gaza shall be forsaken. Gaza is Palestinian territory. And Ashkelon, a desolation. That's the Israeli um, settlements. See that? So it's letting you know the Palestinians shall be forsaken. Ashkelon, which is Israelis, a desolation. They shall drive out Ashdod. Ashdod is Israeli colonies at the noonday. It's telling you what time Ashdod is going to be destroyed. Noonday. And Ekron, when you look up Ekron, it's modern day Tel Mikni. Let me say it again. Ekron is modern day Tel Nikni. It says, and Ekron shall be rooted up. So the Palestinians and the Idumeans, the Israelis, shall be blown to hell. That's the prophecy. That's the prophecy. Woe unto the inhabitants of the seacoast. The seacoast, that's uh, Palestinians. The nation of the Cherethites. Now, Cherith that goes in, that's an ancient name for Palestine. The word of the Lord is against you, O Canaan, the land of the Philistines. You see that land of the Philistines? That's the old name. The modern name is Palestine. I will even destroy thee, that there shall be no inhabitant. Do y'all see that? And the sea coast shall be dwellings and cottages for shepherds and folds for flocks. Why? Because Gaza is going to be wiped out. Ashkelon is going to be wiped out. Ashdod is going to be wiped out. Ekron, which is Telmikni, shall be wiped out. That's the, that's the Israelis and the Palestinians. They're going to be wiped out of that land. Verse 7. And the coast shall be for the remnant of the house of Judah. Do y'all see that? The coast shall be for the remnant of the house of Judah. Now, think about this. Think about this. 
This is Zephaniah prophesying. Zephaniah was during the Persian captivity. Understand, understand, understand. Because a Christian will say, no, that happened when Joshua entered the land. That was thousands of years prior. No, this is a prophecy about what is to come. Read again, verse seven. And the coast shall be for the remnant of the house of Judah. What's going to happen on that coast? Verse six just told you. And the sea coast shall be dwellings and cottages for shepherds and foals for flocks. And the coast shall be for the remnant of the house of Judah. They shall feed there upon, thereupon in the houses of of Ashkelon shall they lie down in the evening, for the Lord their God shall visit them and turn away their captivity. Do you see that? Do you understand that? Do you comprehend that? I pray you all do. I pray you all do. So with that, brothers, with that, sisters, let's get to the reading of the shout out letters and donations, shall we? IUIC TV, where we are recreating the narrative for the black family. As the Bible says, where there's no vision, the people perish. The media have been vehicles that have conveyed destructive images of God's children, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Not only are we in the streets, but we are on the airwaves and networks, compelling our people to come back to their heritage. Tune in to IUIC TV. All right, let's get to the reading of the shout out letters. This first letter says, Shalom, Bishop Nathaniel, Most High in Christ, bless you and all IUIC. Thank you for your leadership and all the hard work you've put in for our nation. I pray the Most High continues to strengthen you with his spirit. Keep you in good health. Most High in Christ, bless you. Shalom, Brother Lot of the IUIC Boston camp. Shout out to Captain Gideon of the Boston camp. All praises. The next one is a letter. It says, hello, Bishop. Glad to see you healthy and looking good. Long time since I sent my alms. Uh, battling this imp excessive shop, impulsive excessive shopping. Fighting to get control of it. Praying and pleading God to help me. If I send IUIC to arms, I can slowly get it under control and finally stop. Sorry for the lapse in months. Your teachings are helping as well. All of IUIC teaching. My apologies again. Simone T. Thank you, Sister Simone. Stop that shopping before you go broke. Y'all know times is short. You know a famine is coming. You know the system might crash and reset. You better stop all that shopping. I'm telling you. You, if, hey, if you're going to get something, change some of your money into gold or silver. How about that? In grams and ounces in various denominations. How about that, huh? All right. The next one is a letter that says, All praise to the Most High God, Bishop Nathaniel. Please use these arms to help wherever you see fit. As the Most High God blesses, I will continue to send arms. Thank you, Ms. Angel Ah. Angela. Angela. That's what you got. Angela. All praises. Thank you, Sister Angela. Next one says, a card, thank you so much. And it says, Shalom Bishop, I just want to drop a few words to say that I love my new family. And I pray you all, you guys, every, pray for you guys every day. I'm sending my alms. I hope that you can use it wherever it is needed. Your sister, A. Williams, 12 tribes worldwide. Your thoughtfulness is a gift I will always treasure. Your sister, A. Williams. A. Wood. Thank you, sister, A. Williams. Um, thank you to all of you, brothers and sisters. Remember, the word alms is A-L-M-S. A-L-M-S. If you hear me use the term, uh, uh, what do, do I use the term arm? Yeah, arms. Like to get out and do something. Alms is get out and do something. Alms, A-L-M-S, is like when you donate for the poor and to help the congregations. All right? I hope you all understand that. Uh, this is from Perry P. Bishop Nathaniel, God bless you and IUIC. All praises. Thank you, Perry P. 
All right, the next one is from E, from Raleigh, North Kakalaka. Greatly appreciate you not... <laughs> Why put your name first and then say, greatly appreciate you not mentioning my name? You can't make this stuff up. All right, uh, try and cut that part out. The hell is this? Oh, my goodness. Uh, I want to express my appreciation for... <laughs> for what all the brethren do to teach the scriptures in raising up Israel. Please associate my arm, alms, A-L-M-S, with the Raleigh School. Listen, y'all, don't put your name. Then three lines later, I'm looking at some lines I didn't read. You write, greatly appreciate not mentioning my name. Don't do that. Just don't put your name on the letter. How about that? Write anonymous. How about that? There's an idea. Then you're going to get mad at me. The hell is going on? Cha! All right. The next one. I'm just teasing y'all. I'm teasing y'all. Next one is read Shalom, IUIC family. Here are our alms, A-L-M-S, or praises to help God's work continue so we can all go home from, wait a minute, let me look around. All right. From Sharon, Corliss, and Howard. Uh, We mailed a money order. Okay. Yes, we did get that money order. All praises. We did get it. Thank you, Seth. Thank you. Thank you. The next one reads, God bless you, leadership. Thanks for waking up our nation. Uh, Kay Wilson. Thank you, Kay Wilson. All right. The next one says, thank you again, Bishop Nathaniel. There really is no words that can describe the work you and the brothers put in. If at all possible, I would love a CD of Spoken. I watch of Spoken. Oh, that's from... uh, Officer Joel of our Ohio camp, Columbus, Ohio. That's Officer Joel. He does the spoken poetry, him and, and the brothers and sisters there. I watched, then you continue. I watched it and I loved it. We know the day is coming when YouTube will be shut down and probably all platforms that tell us the truth about the Bible and who we are. If I have a CD of your works and classes, I won't have to worry. Again, I pray for all my brothers and sisters who put their lives on the line for our people Israel. I worry so hard. Don't worry. I worry so hard about my people. Listen, no, none of our people will be snatched out of God's hands. All right. All right. I'll put their lives on the line for our people Israel. I worry so hard about my people. It seems no one wants to follow the Most High's commandments, even my children. I have my own problems too. Well, use the donations as you please. Thank you again. Sincerely, C. McKnight. Thank you, C. McKnight. And I will make sure Officer Joel starts to put the spoken word possibly on original royalty. That's a thought. I'll do that. All right. All praises to the Most High. All praises. All right. You know what? Let me put this your letter up here so I don't forget because I know I got a short term memory. Y'all have mercy on me. Pray for me, please. All right. All right. This next one says, Bush, Bishop Nathaniel, prayer to you and a nation, for you and a nation. Only prayers will bring us through. That You got that right. Thank you for IOIC. All praise of Sister Louise of the D.C. camp. Shout out to Officer Matt and Officer Mendel. All praises. All praises. This is from Sister Louise P. All praises. All right, this next one is from Inglewood, Cali. Shalom, Bishop. God bless you and your family, and I hope that all is well with you. Please pray for my family during the perilous times. I pray for our Heavenly Father to send His holy angels to destroy and pro- send His holy angels to destroy and protect us from our enemies. Destroy our enemies and protect us from my enemies. You got that right. Please understand, Bishop. There is no hatred in my heart for our enemies, but I know and have read that they have a perpetual hatred for Israel. Love you, Bishop. Your sister in Christ, Marie G. Thank you, Sister Marie G. And I do understand 100%. 100%. And our enemies of the nations will be destroyed according to Bible prophecy, Revelation 18, and the two-thirds of our own people, Zechariah 13, 8 down. So it is written, so it shall be done, you know? Let's just pray we in that number of deliverance, oh, praises. Next is a letter from uh, 
Perry P. God bless you, Bishop Nathaniel, and the men and women that serve our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Value IC, I want to thank you personally for holding the nation of Israel to a higher standard. Believe it or not, a lot of other camps are watching. I guess the Lord sent you back to set the nation of Israel in order. Most high in Christ be blessed. All praise, all praises. Thank you so much, Perry P. Thank you. All right, the next one says, Dear Bishop Nathaniel, I know you don't like long letters, so I'll try and get to the point. Please pray for me and my family. Then you write, please don't read this letter or shout out to, you know, let me put this letter to the side. Y'all have to start off with that. Please don't read this letter on shout out Tuesday. Let me put your letter to the side. I will get to it and pray for the situation. I took a quick glance. I see what's going on. All right. Next letter says, <laughs> I don't get it. Shalom, Bishop. You know the saying, give, give. Give honor where honor is due. Well, shout out to Deacon Ithan, the Doctrine Slayer. I love hidden history. Bishop, he makes my jaw drop every time. Kindly let him know a daughter of Sarah is enjoying his show. Kindly give him half of my donation and the other half for the Booster Club. Sister Hepzibah from across the pond. Yes, let me put this one to the side. Yes, will do, will do. Shout out to Aithan. He'll be back soon. Lord's will. Lord's will. All right. This next one, let me look at it first. Lord have mercy. All right. This one reads, hope you and your family are well. I thank the Most High for allowing his spirit to work in you with great vigor, strength, and might when you deliver your messages to his people. It reminds me of the mighty prophets of the Bible that he, uh, that he used to speak to the children of Israel. May you and all leadership continue to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. This is from Sister Joanna, a.k.a. Albertina. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All praises. All right. This next letter says, Shalom, Bishop, Most High in Christ, bless you always and your household. Please receive these alms. Oh, she got it right. A-L-M-S, all praises. All praises. All right, I see it and I will make sure. This is from Sister Jediah. I got you, Sister Jediah. All praises, all praises. All right, this next one says, Dear Bishop, I hope this message finds you blessed and thank God for giving you the wisdom to bring the truth to the light. We've been in darkness for a long time and now the light shines as more people are understanding and applying the truth. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Philippians 4, 14. You are a blessing to me and my daughter as we continue to listen to all the brothers and prophets share the word. Linda W. Thank you, Linda W. All Praises, all praises. Next letter reads, Shalom, most high in Christ, bless. I hope this letter finds you all in good spirits. I can't physically be there with you all right now. Well, all praises, Lord knows we know now too. But I am gathering information so I can visit and fellowship with the righteous men and women at a camp or school nearby. Until then, I'll keep contributing and donating. I hope this helps your brother in faith and in Christ, KB. Thank you, brother KB. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Brothers and sisters, I know you all love the script uh, when we do classes on prophecy, and it's good and it's necessary. There are classes on exhortation, and it's good and it's necessary. Those are the classes on history that exhort us on how our foreparents are or were and how we are to be. Those are the classes of exhortation. But then there's those classes that some of us don't like, those classes that hit home regarding the commandments and how grimy and ratchet some of us are. Those are the classes that are a necessity. Put your feelings aside. God don't care about my feelings. He don't care about your feelings. Put them feelings aside, those emotions aside. Listen to what's being said according to those commandments. And listen, some of you think I know your personal business, and I don't. It just happens to come out in the spirit. I got to say it like that, in the spirit. And it just happens to apply to you. It's not that I'm digging up and trying to find out your business. I don't know your business. I don't want to know your business. It just comes out. 
in class. I'll give a, a hypothetical story with a hypothetical name, and that situation is you. Just repent, brother. Just repent, sister. I'm not going around calling all these schools. We got saying, tell me about this person. I, no, I don't do that. I don't do that. If there's a situation that I do know about, I will redact your name off of the report. That I'll do. I've done that. Okay. But it's nothing personal. Understand that. It's nothing personal. I do you, when we do that, it's not to, to destroy you or anyone. It's that your situation will apply to other men and women's situations. And our prayer is that you as they can correct yourselves before you wreck yourselves. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's give a shout out of thanks to Irene K. Irene, I do want to say, Irina, Irina K. Your letter was glued to your envelope. And when I opened the envelope, it shredded apart, as did part of this um, Western Union money order. Okay. Just to let you know, but I'm, I, I use glue. Now, the letter, I couldn't glue that one back too well, but all praises to the Lord. Shout out of thanks to G.A. Adolfi. I don't know if I'm pronouncing Is it Adolf or Adolfi? Shout out to G.A. Adolfi. Adolf. Shout out to G.A. Adolfi. Adolf. Shout out to G.A. Adolfi or Adolf. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All praises. Shout out of thanks to Simone T. of Brooklyn, New York. Shout out of thanks to... LaDona MV of North Carolina. Shout out of thanks to Darren M of Maryland. Shout out of thanks to Darda D of Fresh Meadows, New York. Shout out of thanks to Pelalaya. All praises. Shout out of, excuse me, shout out of thanks to Miss and Angelia. Angelia. Shout out of thanks to Shuvan A.W. of Independence, Missouri. Shout out of thanks to Linwood B of Virginia. Shout out of thanks to A. Ramos. All praises. Shout out of thanks to Little David. That's right. He wrote his name Little David. That's I didn't make it up. Shout out of thanks to Terry. Shout out of thanks to T. Perry the third. Shout out of thanks to E. Blaze. Shout out of thanks to Geraldine J. Shout out of thanks to Sharon. Corlise and Howard, shout out of thanks to Karen W. Shout out of thanks to Carolyn M. Shout out of thanks to, you know, I, there's two and I can't read the script, but Lord knows who you are. Oh, you're from Raleigh, North Carolina, though. First initial is an E, I believe. I think, I'm not sure. Shout out of thanks to Linda K.H. of Fresno, California. Shout out of thanks to Eddie B. Shout out of thanks to Kay Campbell. Shout out of thanks to Dolores O. Shout out of thanks to L.L. Moore of Fayetteville, North Carolina. Shout out of thanks to Sharon E. H. All praises. Shout out of thanks to Arthur O. S. of Cumberland, North Carolina. Shout out of thanks to Carlene M. All praises. Shout out of thanks to Louise P. of Arlington, Virginia. Louise P. of Arlington, Virginia again. Shout out of thanks to Marie G. All praises. Shout out of thanks to Harlan C. All praises of North Carolina. Shout out of thanks to I can't read this. It says gift on it and I can't see. Wait, Farmington Hills. That's all I can make out. Shout out of thanks to Dennis L. of uh, Los Angeles. Shout out of thanks to Jacqueline T. K. Shout out of thanks to Marvin B. of Pennsylvania. Shout out of thanks to Albertina D. W. Shout out of thanks to Geraldine J. Shout out of thanks to... I see the initials D.H., all praises. Shout out of thanks to Jediah, all praises. Shout out of thanks to Michael A. Shout out of thanks to Linda 
W. Shout out of thanks to Scott B. Shout out of thanks to Lorinda E. Shout out of thanks to... Hmm. Hmm. R. R. Davis. I think that's right. R. R. Davis. Yes, I believe that is correct. Thank you. Thank you. Shout out of thanks to R. R. Davis again. Brothers, sisters, you know how I love to say... Let's all of us stay healthy, let's stay faithful, let's stay focused, but most of all, let's all of us stay in the spirit. Most high in Christ, bless you all. Love you. Shalom. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Family.